Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi-monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small-scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. For years, we've been hearing about the Sustainable Agriculture Program at Sterling College in Craftsbury Common, Vermont, but have never made the trip there. We've also wanted to visit the Berry Center in Newcastle, Kentucky, which was established to combat the harmful impacts of modern industrial agriculture. Last fall, I was able to do both when Sterling College and the Berry Center collaborated to offer the Wendell Berry Farming Program. In this episode, we'll spend time with Berry Center founder and executive director, Mary Berry, Wendell Berry Farming Program Dean, Dr. Leah Bands, and sustainable agriculture instructor, Rick Thomas, and a few of the program students working with some of the college's draft animals. Don't go away, we'll be right back. The Berry Center is, um, our mission is to continue the work of my father, Wendell Berry, his father, John Berry Sr., and his brother, John Berry Jr. It's really hard to talk about one without talking about the other two. In fact, my father says that his father did the important work and he just took it up and that was uh, to put a, st a stabilizing economy under good diversified farming. My father, what I have learned from my father um, is that what's happened to rural places, um, we're sitting in Henry County, Kentucky, the place we love the most, um, what's happened to places like this has not been inevitable and it's been a destruction by design and my grandfather or my father's work has been to study the history of what's happened in agriculture and try to change the way we judge what's happened or today um, he's he has said that it's wrong to be to have your vision limited by a particular place but by learning about a particular place and its people and its land, then you learn how to, to um, know other places, um, how to think about them, how to think about what's happened. And I think that's uh, his work, both fiction, nonfiction, and the poetry really has done that. Um, I think it's made him, he's certainly not the only one, but it's his work, um, is singular in some ways, and I think maybe that's the way. Um, I think, um, I mean, you can go back uh, in time and talk forever about uh, whether or not country people have ever been appreciated. Peasants, um, people who did the work of the land, people who understood good land use, have they ever been appreciated as they should have been? I think the argument could be made that they have not. Since the 50s, um, since Eisenhower's administration, there was, a, there was the uh, actual spoken intention to get rid of farmers. There were too many farmers. That has never been retracted. And given the economy of today's um, farming, you'd have to say it's still in place. Um, so it was said we had too many farmers. Nobody's ever said how, how many are too few. Well, I think we're, we've about to hit too few. Well, we hit too few a long time ago. So along with the um, edict from Washington that there are too many farmers, there's also been the cheap food policy, which was um, running everything. It, uh, so things had to be cheap and efficient and um, to hell with the cost. So now a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of things, a lot of loans are coming due, and we've borrowed from the future for a long time now, and I think now we're beginning to see that we've got to do better. 
And you're not talking about financial loans per se. You're talking about social, and talking economic, about, and cultural, I'm talking about ecological. the whole thing, yes. I also wanted to work on the culture here. I think we, we've got a cultural crisis. So our uh, reading program, our bookstore, uh, the events that we have here, bringing um, all kinds of literary events to this place um, is part of that. And it's been a phenomenal, well, it's just been such a pleasure to see people respond. I, I mean, I, I, we, we set about to do it, and my daughter Virginia has gotten it done, but I don't think I would have bet a nickel that we could do it. I just thought we should do it, so we did. I've said for years that we ought to use Henry County, Kentucky as a classroom. Well, Sterling College has made it possible for us to use Henry County, Kentucky, its people and its land as a classroom. Um, because, we, because of the Burley Tobacco Program, really, we've held on to small farm agriculture longer than some places. Um, our landscape does not lend itself to um, thousands of acres of, of corn and soybeans, although we, sim we have gotten thousands, <laughs> way too much uh, grain right. production. I think our, our partnership with Sterling College is, a, is really a radical change in agricultural education. It is truly place-based. A person could spend an entire life passionately involved with one farm. That takes discipline. That takes uh, accepting limits. And our whole culture's gone limitless. So part of the education is to pass that along as well as the practical things young people need. And I actually think the liberal arts part of this program is maybe it's maybe more important than ever that young people get a liberal arts education, but for these young people who say they want to farm, they're chosen for this program because they want to farm, um, they need to understand where they fit in the long lineage of agrarian thinkers. They won't have the culture that I came home to. It's not as strong as it used to be. So maybe they need that more than they've ever needed it. Um, to understand they're not alone. They're a part of a history. Uh, and that's the liberal arts piece that I think is, is so important. Uh, the mission of the program is to provide undergraduate, um, I'll, I'll say the kind of uh, official way of, of looking at it, is sure. to provide an, uh, a really, really deep and meaningful um, agrarian undergraduate education um, that is to uh, really designed to immerse students in uh, the life of a community, of this particular community, and to use this place as a classroom. Um, and ultimately to help t uh, to uh, bolster um, the Berry Center's goal of creating um, and fostering uh, land conserving communities where uh, that will support the cultures of good farming. Um, and the, uh, the, the college's uh, uh, goal, goal and, and their role in that work is, um, is a, an incredible fit uh, because they have doing, been doing that sort of work uh, for over 60 years now. I think that it is really the, the right way to approach education in general, <laughs> um, but specifically in agricultural education, is to make sure that our students uh, are, are not only aware of the kinds of uh, um, good farming that are taking place around them, but that they're actually contributing to that and that they're, they're learning from it as they're working side by side with those farmers. Um, even today, I was uh, just uh, looking out the window of the Berry Center here, and I saw two of the uh, farm families that um, that our students have been working uh, with. Not only through our work program, Sterling is a Sterling College is a, is a, a work program college. Um, so our students have been out on their farms, um, uh, just you know, harvesting, um, you know, doing whatever work needs to be done there. But then they've also had some opportunities to, um, you know, to actually, you know, really deeply understand 
their operations and how they came to that work and what that work uh, means to their families and what it means to these communities. And uh, just, you know, seeing the families here at the Berry Center just popping in to take a tour of the community with our African-American uh, friends who are going to show us around the historical sites. I think for me it was kind of catalyzed, this is, this is what it's about. We're in and out of each other's lives in some ways that are, I think, um, incredibly different from the way that most formal education is uh, structured and how we've, how, we've, um, how, we've, how we've put that together is, is, uh, has been made possible by the fact that we have community members who are interested in doing that. Our approach to the, um, <laughs> our approach to the agricultural production systems um, is, is really um, based on ecology. Uh, based on the concept of nature as the measure, um, which is, uh, interestingly enough, is a concept that um, uh, the poet Alexander Pope came up with. <laughs> it was mentioned in one of his poems, and uh, Wendell Berry and Wes Jackson have kind of pulled that up as a concept and, and sh shown the light on it as a way of thinking about um, what the, the standard is, that nature is the standard for um, our agricultural production and, um, and that's a, you know, figuring out what that standard is and how to actually incorporate that into uh, production practices is, um, uh, that's the trick. <laughs> and as much as we're able to, agroecological systems as the foundation for uh, good land use uh, is, is really a, a kind of cornerstone of, of our um, approach to agricultural production. And that of course takes into consideration all of the, um, the cultural components that influence that. And so, um, you know, when we think about our, um, <laughs> when we think about the really um, well, the kind of buzzword is multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach to education. What we're doing is we're modeling that after um, ecology in its way because um, ecology isn't just about, um, you know, <laughs> focusing in on one particular subject or one particular uh, uh, component of uh, species or biological systems or uh, abiotic systems uh, and in fact ecology also encompasses the human culture as well and so we think it's really important that our education does the same and so our our way of thinking about it in more layman's terms is that we're putting a farm in the middle of a liberal arts curriculum and a curriculum that pulls together uh, knowledge um, in ways that ha are um, logical it seems like um, but which have been separated out in most of formal education. This class is called Draft Animal Power Systems 1 Okay. and then it has a colon and a subtitle called Driving Principles. Okay. Then I teach uh, Draft Animal Power Systems 2, which is called Work Principles, and Draft Animal Power Systems 3, which is called Farming with Horses. We'll also teach uh, Restoration Forestry class, which is inter interfacing draft power working in the logwoods. And so students will learn all their chainsaw skills needed to master really? felling trees and then extract them with our draft power. Uh, and then the fifth course in this suite is uh, Farrier Science. Okay. And those five classes uh, culminate in a minor in draft animal power systems from the college. And is that then, is that four semesters that you just described, those five classes? You can do it in four semesters, yep. Okay. Yep. And then does that that is does that also include some soil science? And right. Kind of so stuff? that's just my piece of it. Those are the classes I teach, and then we have another faculty member who's teaching the livestock systems classes, the pasture management systems classes, the uh, soils classes will be embedded in a component of that. Uh, then there is uh, adjunct faculty that will be teaching business classes, small farm business classes. We have an adjunct faculty teaching agroforestry. We have a humanities teacher, Leah, uh, who is teaching a variety of humanities classes. You know, in my opinion, it's those humanities classes that really kind of weave and tie together our whole program. Uh, 
it is the Wendellberry Farming Program, right. after all. Right. <laughs> so we will we will utilize some of our colleagues in Vermont. We'll be able to come down and teach segments of those classes, and we have a vast experience bank in Vermont for agroecology, food systems, food sovereignty, um, the humanities. And so we're going to tap into their expertise and bring them here and engage them in conversation in a different place. And I think I'm really super excited about that. So I think when learning is aligned with your with your life goals, then college all of a sudden becomes uh, something really different than how we view higher education. It becomes more of a calling. It becomes more of a it's a different kind of degree for sure. Uh, something that uh, that Wes Jackson has has coined a phrase that he's coined that always just is in the back of my head is that higher education has really built uh, one degree, and that is a degree in upward mobility. Uh, whereas what Wes thinks we should we should be thinking about is a degree in homecoming, and that's what this program is strongly rooted in. And of course, we're we're trying to put Wendell's writing to work. And a lot of that has to do with that whole notion of just stop, dig in, get to work. Be in the place. Yeah, be here. Uh, this is not a bad place to be, and uh, why not? Right. You know, why not me? Uh, and so that's really where, when I speak to Wendell about uh, sort of, you know, what, what do you want, you know, what do you want these students to do? What do you want? Uh, you know, what are your hopes for this right. for this program? And he usually just kind of chuckles. Uh, but um, I think it, within that chuckle, there's this notion of what I just mentioned: develop a home. You know, develop a home economy. Uh -huh. uh, think of a farming system that works for you and do it. And so that's that's really, I'd say the the crux of what we're trying to accomplish is just that. Um, the local environment is a it can be a rich it is a rich environment. You just have to tap into it. Yeah, this this place is our laboratory. Uh -huh. This place is our laboratory, and and that might be Pawpaw, and that might be outside of Louisville. That's right. Yeah. It's it's wherever you stop and dig in, get to know your community, get to know your farmers, get to know your land, get to know your get to know all of it, and work at a scale and a pace that is meaningful to you. To me, draft power does just that. It aligns my pace with my profession. And I find if I, if I try to work beyond that pace, then things start to fall apart. I, I, I start taking shortcuts or I start getting lost in the noise, right? Whereas if I stay at their pace, they do limit. You know, they are limiting, right. uh, but maybe those limits are important to understand. Right, it's so. kind of part of the Amish philosophy. Right, right. Degree. that's right. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. I'd say that's kind of the key to, to at least how I teach. Let's get the basics down. Let's feel really good about making sure that all of our woes and goes are in place and that we've got a good park. After we've got that, let's get out and start doing some meaningful work. And I think that's what sets apart this particular program because we have two years. Right. It's not a workshop where you're there for the weekend. Right, right. It's two years. And everything we do, we want to have a draft-centric mentality. So if we build a sheep shed, I want it on skids so that the oxen can move it when the time comes. Every watering system that we put into place that we have to haul water to, build it so that the draft animals can move it. The chicken tractors should all move based on draft power. So every, the draft, it's draft centric. Uh, and, and again, having that time to learn the basics, but then apply the meaningful work, that's the key. You have two students here right now because we're on break. Yeah. Um, next week you'll have 12? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, and the way it, the way we work 
is we break them out into groups of three. Okay. Right. And so I have, uh, we have one common lecture per week where we all sort of feels like a, I hate to say a traditional college classroom because there's nothing about Sterling that is a traditional college classroom. But we sit in a lecture and we have readings and we talk and study and do that sort of thing. But that's not where you learn how to drive animals. And so then I break them out into individual labs where there's three students that come out. And so they're here for an entire afternoon and we'll have particular objectives. So we have sort of a lab manual that we follow along and we, um, you know, it's, it allows me to teach students and meet them exactly where they are. And are they at different places? Do you yeah, have some absolutely. that are a year further than the others? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. I have one student that's actually taken this course already in Vermont and is somewhat retaking this, but it's in a whole different, it's in a, a whole different system, right? And so he is, uh, he's learning things kind of again, but also through a different lens. My husband and I are looking to do um, we want to do a self-sustainable farm that provides 60% of its income and the products that we would normally purchase, we want to provide those from our own farm. Um, and we really want to do that based off of meat goat production. Um, I've been with the Kentucky Goat Producers Association well, for about two and a half years now. Um, so that's kind of where I got into goats and we really, we have a market for it in Louisville. Um, being from a, a more urban area, there's a lot of uh, ethnic influence and a lot of, you know, people emigrating here and immigrating here um, that are really in the market for that. So we want to do mostly meat goats with some other crops that will help kind of build soils and all. I come from a livestock background far more than crops at all. So that's part of what I'm really enjoying about this program is learning to kind of round out my education. Um, both my husband and I come from very urban backgrounds. We grew up in Louisville in the city. Draft power had not been something I had initially thought about, funny enough, coming from a horse background. But now that I've been doing it more, it, it makes sense for a small scale production. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. You're on your first semester here? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I had just moved back to the family farm from Montana. Um, and my parents were actually considering selling the old family farm. And so I, I wasn't really like too keen on that. I really appreciated the land. I grew up working it. Um, and so my, um, my idea was I would buy the farm from my parents and take it over. Um, but I wanted to know how to do it right and have a successful job to support me. So I was going to go do outdoor education. And stumbled into Sterling via just a, like a search and a couple of people like, hey, you should check this college out. Um, and then I met Rick Thomas that day and I was kind of telling him about the, my farm. Um, it's been kind of left, um, fallow for a very long time. So the barns are really like just not good anymore. And I was telling my, uh, I was telling Rick about this and he was the first person to look at me and go, well, you could fix that if you really wanted to. And ever since then I was hooked. Um, Rick was the draft person and I just fell in love with draft animals because I, I liked that uh, version of farming better than tractors. Um, my farm is surrounded by monocultures and big corporate farms. And so that was really terrible to me. And I was telling Rick about that. And he's like, yeah, you could fix that if you really put your effort into it. And I have been a disciple of Rick since then. <laughs> like, I've been like, yeah, I've been like, just, yep, I'm gonna get into sustainable farming. I'm gonna run my own draft program. Um, I was. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.